Welcome to the App Advisory Show, your fortnightly dose of all things cloud accounting, apps, and app advisory. Hello, all. Welcome to another episode of the App Advisory Show. I have an old friend, um, Glenn Foster. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, very good, thank you. So, now uh, working at Libio formerly of Zero, um, which a lot of people know you at. But uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear a little bit of uh, what you're doing now. Uh, we've had a bit of a pre-chat, which has been mega interesting as normal. Um, so tell us a bit about yourself, Glenn, uh, and then we'll have a, a little bit of a chat around the uh, the solution that you're working with now. Yeah, thanks. So, so look, I've spent 15, 16 years in the accounting technology uh, business. I, I started in my mid twenties, I think, uh, a company called MYOB, which anyone with Australasian roots will be, be familiar. Uh, they're kind of the incumbent out there, and they had a business in the UK for a while. They acquired a couple of businesses. That. They acquired company. They acquired Vistopia and Solution Six. So we sold Vistopia accounts production and uh, and per tax and core tax the uh, the tax products um, and sold them into yeah into UK accounting firms initially in London into sole practitioner firms and then then larger firms across across the Midlands and then they found that small business accounting market really difficult I think because MOB also had an equivalent to the Sage Line Fifty product right. and. Um, and at that point then, um, so they decided to kind of retreat back to Australia and focus where they could, and they sold their business to CCH, who owned by Walters Clear. Yeah, okay. So, so I moved over there for a couple of years, carried on doing the, the same stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, an opportunity kind of came up at, uh, at Zero. So you probably know, you know, know Darren Glanville now of Fathom, like this industry yeah. is fairly incestuous, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'd worked with Darren and he gave me a quick phone call at the back, end of the, uh, back, the back end of the year, 20 or 2009, and said, look, we're looking, Zero's are here, we're looking for someone in the Midlands. Do you want to come be employee number number seven? Because Gary would love to have a coffee with you and have a Christmas coffee and a mince pie. Um, I'm sold on baked goods, by the way. So uh, the mince pie sealed the deal. Uh, I had coffee with, uh, with Gary and the rest kind of history. I spent the next 12 years like going through a multitude of different roles, but yeah, helping to grow that that zero business to, I guess, to guess what it is today. And then spent the last five years on their kind of UK leadership team, driving mm -hmm. go to markets from sales, like direct and partner sales, uh, sales operations and partner consulting. Great stuff. Um, and tell us a bit about where you are now today, because I think we all saw it on probably LinkedIn when you announced there's a, there's a, there's a move and it's coming and, 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 a, and probably not a product too many people have heard from because it's come along from France. So give us a bit of an, an overview of it. Yeah, so Libya was caught in France, about just, just short of 150 people um, okay. in France, um, did a Series A last year, um, and have built a really, really strong business um, in France, but have real ambitions to be a European leader. And, and so we do like predominantly supply payments, so accounts payable payments okay. um, at the minute. Um, so we do a bit more in France, we do accounts receivable in France um, and some other stuff because the French accounting market's a little bit further behind, I think, than the, than the UK market. Maybe I'll okay. touch on that in a, in a bit. Yeah. But probably in the UK, we see, see ourselves as a solution for approvals and then payments. Um, so helping FD services, like accountants that have got virtual FD services where they might want to take payments on for a client but need the approval workflow. Equally for businesses that need someone else in the business to approve the, the invoices. So, so that's predominantly what we do. Uh, we use like, like e-wallet technology as well as open banking to give people options around how they can pay those, uh, how they pay those invoices. Because I think that choice is, um, is really, really useful for business to be able to pick the best option um, and the most cost-effective option for them to, uh, to pay invoices. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of kind of what we do. Um, excited about that opportunity to uh, uh, to to get involved with um with accountants and really start to bring bring this solution to, to town. Okay, so so give us a bit. Of, I actually didn't realise they were that big in terms of like the employee numbers for sure. Um, give us a bit of a history of it. Like where did the where did the business like come from? Is it normally a problem that's being solved or something uh, that that a founder finds? So. So, so where did that sort of come from? And, and uh, yeah, tell us a bit about that journey. Yeah, it's kind of exactly that. Like two of the co-founders, like they've got a history in like, uh, like uh, Pierre, the CEO, was uh, worked in M and A for quite a few years. Okay. Um, 
but then founded some restaurants like really passionate about food it's like French right like there's a French guy called Pierre that likes food and wine right so it's, uh, it's like <laughs> stereotypical an guy, it's like an English guy called David that likes chips and that like, beer <laughs> uh, so, but it's, yeah it's a lot of that. So he likes good food and wine um, and he, he founded or invested in some restaurants um, and um, Jeremy who uh, who's one of the other co-founders um, was a, a lawyer by by trade but he founded um, actually a fish and chip restaurant in Paris Oh, so cool. fish and, yeah, the idea of fish and chips called Chips and Co. Um, and they both had, and they knew each other, and they both had like really similar challenges in the fact that supplier invoices for them took so much time. I mean, to go and get the head chef to sign off the grocery or the meat order or, or yeah. things like that. But just that time that was burnt, like chasing around, trying to do that, and then having to go and pay these invoices. And it affected supplier relationships, which are yeah. like, like so in every industry, right? Like really important, like to, to keep on the good side of your your suppliers, and that's kind of where where Libio came from. Then they found they were looking for obviously because they wanted to move into the payment side a bit. A third co-founder, and they found Pierre Antoine, who's got a big background in payments businesses, uh, really knows that that industry so well, and he's our kind of chief CTO, chief product officer. Um, and that's kind of where the three of them together founded Libio back in like, 2019, um, yeah. and yeah. Kind of it's gone on from there built the business in france uh obviously got got set up um but like the goal has always been to be a european business yeah. um and, and the goal being then that actually like the, the next market they want to really um to win in is, is the uk and then continue to to build from there and we've got like we've got some customers in belgium as well so we've kind of moved into into belgium um and then like spain and italy are obviously attractive as well but equally northern northern europe as well but the job for the next like 12 to 18 months is uh, is heavily from solely focused pretty much on the uk and, and in, in france how have they grown that that sort of market share but or got themselves so prominent has it been are they, is it similar like we see a lot of the partner with the accountant and bookkeeping channel as a bit of direct like how, how have they grown that that base um yeah. from the french perspective a very like the opposite way to i think how we think we need to grow uh, cool. in, in the uk so direct to, to market yeah um like the french accounting like, world is just very different like yeah compliance compliance led like once a year there's been no making tax digital so lots and mm. lots of like manual record keeping yeah um well i'm really uh, optimistic that i think that if we get it right in the uk we'll actually be able to bring the french business along with us a bit like people may say like like zero did right with the like new zealand adopted technology a bit quicker like much yeah easier, okay uh, much easier to adopt technology and actually i think brought some of the some of the uk along with them i don't let's say that's correct because that's like from 12 years ago i remember sitting in front of a bunch of innovative accounting firms that were adopting technology but but anyway you could argue that the uk market got, got dragged along a little bit by seeing other countries yeah. move move at, move at pace and i think we could probably do the same with france but it has been heavily selling direct to business owners that have those like have those challenges um whereas we see it very different in the uk because of the prevalence of accounting software um, because of the, like, the number or the maturity, I think, of the accounting market who are now working closer with their clients and the opportunity to, yeah, to do more for them. I think that we'll see most of our most of our focus being on the accounting side. I always think it's, it's pretty strong if you've got a direct channel anyway, whatever percentage of your uh, world that is, whether that's a, a higher 80 percent or whether that's down at 20 percent, because I think when the SMEs are, 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 are actually taking the solution, implementing it, it proves the product, right? Because sometimes I think there's a feeling when you go through a partner channel, it's like, okay, there's um, you haven't got to sell it to the end person, so you don't know as a product what what this can do. I think when you've got a direct channel, and I've seen this with some of our uh, vendors here in the UK, right? They've got a direct channel. It's like it, if they've got a direct channel and it works, that means the product works. It's then about as, as an accounting or a bookkeeping firm how you provide that to the client, how you make them aware, how you educate, how you implement, whatever that might be. And I think that's some of the challenge. So I'm always quite encouraged when there's a direct channel because I think that's that means the product's proven and that if that's what the, the business has grown on, then that means there's a, there's a good product under, underneath that hood. Yeah, look, definitely. I think there's a, a couple of key points, there, I think. So the one thing is that like, you want that push and pull, right? So you want to be pushing clients to accountants that already have your solution. Yeah. Equally, you want accountants to be familiar or bookkeepers to be familiar with your product that they're talking to the client. That's the ideal scenario. Like most most zero partners who like, joined up 12 years ago um, will tell you the God's honest truth that they found zero because a client came to them with it. 
yes, uh, yeah, they yeah. weren't they weren't looking right. They weren't good people because they had no idea, right? You actually, most accountants and bookkeepers have clients that are a lot more technically proficient than they are with with tech. So they find these products, or they had a family member that lived in New Zealand and they discovered zero. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was like, it's kind of how it, how it works. So it, it doesn't matter who they are. Those first fifty that kind of found us, most of them found us because the client the client came to them. And you get that push and pull, right? That's great. But the challenge with the direct channel fairly early on is like it's expensive to market yeah, to definitely. direct businesses when you've got a small subscription cost. It's kind of yeah. fine if you're in the enterprise world and you're going to go and bank a hundred grand, two hundred grand, five hundred grand deal. Our yeah. product's 20, 29 pounds. So it's yeah. like, you, like there's a lot of activity and a lot of work and a lot of cost that can be like badly invested in trying to build a direct channel. And Zero saw that. Like, it was really hard. Like we pulled back a couple of times on that direct channel and invested back into the partner until we were ready to go to that next step. But like when they got, got to that point where they were like, actually, now we've got the brand, like the direct channel will really help. Now's the time to do radio, tube advertising, eventually yeah, onto, yeah. Onto, onto TV, right? Like if you, if you do that stuff too soon, you, you can burn millions of pounds really, really quickly um, <laughs> and get very little return for it. So I think it's just figuring out what, what works for us. But I know we've got some specific verticals um, which then make marketing a little bit better. So that hospitality and, and, and kind of catering vertical, there's technology, there's medical, um, like there's um, um, startups especially who are like, trying to be as efficient as they can early on. There's a couple of areas where we know that like, Libio is extremely strong and we can move in those kind of circles and market to those kind of people who then see someone else like them using the same solution. Yeah, 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 that, that makes sense, yeah. Okay, that's, that's pretty pretty interesting. I mean, in terms of like, um, oh, here's a question for you. You may or may not know this. What does Libio even mean? Is it French for something or is it just like a cool name they picked? Uh, now you've got me. Um, no. I can't come back to you on that one. You yeah, know, that's I, right. I I, it's just an interesting, I just thought, oh, maybe it's, it's a meaning. Like, you know, like zero doesn't mean something. It's just like a, a, a play on a word, which is yeah. interesting. But I'm just, I was just interested. But Okay, cool. Well, we might interject what that means uh, later on or do a follow-up podcast on the meaning of all of these apps uh, and vendors. Um, so tell us a bit about some of the key things that are, are resonating with the uh, end users, the, um, the, the accountants, the bookkeepers, like some of the key features that you really think are, are, are something that people should be bearing in mind when thinking about your product. Yeah, I, I think if I, like, if I focus a little bit on the accountant and bookkeeper side of it, as I guess a lot of your audience will, will be, um, I think two key features, I think. So like, one is approvals. So the ability for an accountant who or a bookkeeper who like, are operating as like the business's bookkeeper or like a virtual FD type yeah. service. Yeah. And at the minute probably can't do payments or don't do payments or yeah. shouldn't do payments, but do payments. Like, it's like, it's not it's not a beautiful experience. Quite um, risky. It can be quite risky as well, really. Yeah. Definitely, like high value, right? Because you're taking away a pain point from a business, but like you say, right, say risky. So that approval process where you can submit invoices to be approved by the client prior to them being paid, I think is, is a critical, um, critical function. Like it's not, there are payment solutions in market that will allow you to do payment, open banking, open technology, right? People can, like people can use it. So like you can start to have solutions that will do the payments, but I think the approval engine built off the back of it just gives accountants that, tool uh, not just to do the payments the payments happen but actually the tool to do approvals and, and actually have a proper process embedded and and then libio can be part of that app stack that they might have for that solution right they've got their general yeah. ledger software they've got ocr they've got accounts receivable payments maybe go cardless stripe and then they've got libio on top of that for the accounts payable side i think there's a nice yeah. nice app stack just there yeah um, so that, that's one thing i think the approval the other thing is like what we call one click payments so the ability okay. to then not need to go into the bank because that's the challenge for accountants. Like with open banking, it drives you into the bank and you still got to log in, do the payments, right? Agreed. So that's kind of fine for a business who's that's their own bank account. And actually, see lots of our customers that are businesses, they'll use open banking because it's the it's, it's fine, it's, it's slick, yeah, uh, nice and easy to do. The other side of our business is like, we'll be fairly familiar with like an e-wallet. Um, mm -hmm. so, it's business. so like you top up the wallet and then effectively one click payments can, can happen through that right okay um, so that, that's the kind of goal um just there that will give accountants an opportunity to say well actually you've approved these 10 invoices i want to go and pay them now and then you can you've got a couple of options you can either say i want to pay now or i want to pay on due date so libio extracts mm -hmm. all of the information from the invoice so it's okay so it does acr so it'll pull the due date of the invoice and then you've got the option to say well i want to pay these three today 
but actually I want to pay these remaining four or five invoices on the due date and click the approve and pay button and then it will go okay. off and pay those invoices for you at, okay. at that point. So you can you can set up the payment run essentially, but let's just do it to due date, uh, which is taken off the, the, the invoice anyway. Cool. Yeah. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, the final thing. I'm going to be cheeky and still three. You asked for two, but I'll go with three. I'll go with I it. I can't the, count uh, anyway, Glenn. <laughs> is the I think the integration with Wise. So I think we're seeing like like post Brexit, like more and more international transactions. Yeah. Great. So actually, the fact that like say we've got and we work closely with uh, with the team at, at Wise, um, and like effectively we've got international payments embedded into the into the app. So if you are transacting okay. like into Ireland even or, or into Europe or, or the US, then um, obviously the yeah I think that multi currency payment part of it is a yeah is a is a nice USP and um, probably. Because people only want one solution for this. It's not like you're going to have, well, do my international payments through this product and my UK payments through this one? It's yeah, like, well, I agree. If I, use, agree. if I use this solution, I've got it covered, right? Even if yeah. I don't have any right now in the future, I'm probably going to want to transact internationally. Um, even just a little bit, it means I can use this this solution for that as well. Yeah, it means you haven't got to flip-flop about and, and bring Correct. others in. So you have that. And um, is there anything... Uh, I, I always talk about roadmaps and ask, like, is there anything on the horizon which looks good? Because roadmaps shouldn't have timelines, right? Because um, we all know software companies and, and and roadmaps and timelines are hard to hard to hit. And having also run do run uh, part of a, a software business as well, but part of our business, it, it's hard to the deadlines are hard to um, follow and keep to for for all sorts of reasons. But is there any sort of things that you think are coming up that, or you even at high level that you you think are, are worth keeping an eye out for? Uh, well, I think for us, like the, the first thing we're doing at the minute, we want a bit of a campaign to to gather feedback because what we want to build is we want to build a product that accountants and bookkeepers really want to use. So actually, I think that our roadmap will probably be quite heavily defined by user feedback that we get. Because yeah. say, well, actually, like, what does Utopia look like to you as an accountant or bookkeeper? If you were going to build your own payment product, right? Um, what, what would you want? What would it do? And yeah. I think that's that's what I'm excited about being able to gather a lot of early feedback. And we've already started that that process um, right. to, to get that. Like, I do think that there is like, big big opportunities um, like auto top up coming for the wallet. I think is neat because yeah, the challenge okay. when you've got a wallet is you've got to then go and manually top it up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and that still creates a challenge of you have to go to the client right and say, hey, look, we need to pay these. 10 invoices can you go and transfer ten thousand four hundred and twelve pounds and fifty two pence please into the into the wallet uh actually what we've got yeah. coming is auto top up so actually we'll be able to pull that money straight through um into the wallet which is just like uh, the the challenge with payments historically i think has been there's been so many friction points yeah definitely but like it was like small business bookkeeping right before bank feeds right? i need to go to the client get access to their yeah, bank yeah. statements they'd either go and like find paper copies or they'd have to log into their bank to try and get them and it was like everywhere you looked across that process there were friction yeah payment payments is the new equivalent of, of that and even with open banking like whilst like, optimistic of the future of open banking it's, it's kind of b2c at the minute it's not brilliantly built for business to yeah, business agreed, agreed. Um, so there's still a fair amount of work that we can uh, that, that needs to go on there I think to make it a great business to business tool so that auto top up and wallet function allows us what we call one click payments which is just removing remove the friction make it easy for people accountants can either take over the payments or they can still just get to the approval stage and get the client to do it but either way we can we can make the execution of the payment really really simple and, and the data we've pulled tells us something like on average like 10 hours a, a week can be wasted by uh, finding invoices, shuffling invoices, like paying them. It's just like that, that process. And it's not much fun. Um, and certainly with our passion, I think for like, hospitality and, and catering, it's like those businesses have had a ridiculously rough few years. Yeah, agreed. agreed. So the opportunity to give them a tool that may allow them to focus on getting more people through the door, but, like more people sat in seats, eating, drinking, having good times, like spending time with their friends and family, like, and there's a nice purpose, I think, uh, I think to that. And whilst hotel and catering is not the only industry we operate in, it's, and I think everyone's quite passionate about that because of the challenges they've had and the opportunity to bring bring people together. Yeah, it, it sounds like you're at that. Really, I always, always like these points when when solutions are starting to build out and they're in that very feedback led point, the, the agile perspective of uh, people can really influence what how these products can progress and evolve really um yeah. and i always think that's a really exciting part to be and if you're gonna help with that it becomes harder right that these systems grow 
it becomes harder to be so agile and so feedback driven. Um, certainly, but but I think it's really nice that you get these agile points of, of products where you can really help influence the, the progress and evolution of these systems. Definitely. Now, there's a real balance to be had. There's that like, famous Henry Ford quote, right? It's by people, if I gave people what they wanted, I would have given them faster horses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So actually, you want some, like, you find really smart tech people, right? And they can build stuff that you and I may have never thought we wanted. But yes. actually, like, the, I think, like, bank feeds and the bank wreck that Craig Walker built at Zero was that example. No one was really asking for it. Um, but actually, like, when, like, that bank wreck, like, in Zero now is, like, legendary. Like, no one's yeah. been able to replicate or get close to the experience. It, it gives yeah. you the gamification, the experience. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's just, it was different, right? But it wasn't like lots of people were, were asking um, for that. Equally, like, tech people can spend a lot of time building stuff that nobody uses so you really just have to get that balance right of like and you'll make yeah. a few mistakes along the way right you'll build stuff Absolutely. that like, people don't want and every now and again you'll you'll, you'll land like a phenomenal feature or experience or or, or something a part of the product that yeah. people were never expecting but changes the way that they use your product and changes the way maybe they operate as a business so yeah i think like, that balance is, is is key you need feedback you need ongoing feedback no matter how big you get equally sometimes you've just got to like trust the people that are the brains behind technology and like let them to go off and go a bit rogue and, and build some stuff absolutely i, I still remember finding rico it still blows people's minds that that's uh, <laughs> you know people haven't looked at it like how long and you've still not got to grips with that. I still, still think that was like, you know, very simple concept, um, but absolute game changer for a lot of people with that. Well, the, the biggest and the longest round of applause ever heard at AzeroCon, I think, for, <laughs> for Find and Rico. But like I say, it's like, like, like people in tech businesses, and we're exactly the same, is you're looking to fix problems. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, people like me and you, right, in the business, you get out of bed to do. It's like make the lives easier of your customers. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, people buy your product, like most cloud products, right? They're recurring month by month with no contract. Yeah. So it's like people can come and go as they please. So you're recontracting yeah. every single month yeah. with every single one of your customers, which is quite a daunting feeling. Um, so you've got to keep building stuff that people want. You've got to keep innovating. And I think like things like, like Find and Recode are just like, they're a great example of like a solution that just fixed a like major issue that, that people yeah. had. Uh, in a sense, especially because you couldn't like there was always that age of well, what, what if I make a mistake can I back up and restore it to last Thursday yeah, like, I can in, like I can in desktop software and it was like no you can't like, well <laughs> you really need a backup and restore function so, oh, it doesn't quite work like that so yeah it's like they, every now and again you land on something that just like it's phenomenally strong and fixes like a problem or an issue that, that people would have and, and they'll love it and it doesn't need to be the sexiest feature in, in the world right it doesn't need to have pretty graphs no uh, or amazing it just needs to be something you go wow actually that makes my life easier so that's that's important to me yeah i was touching on uh, accounts and software what, what are you guys linking in with what are you guys integrating with i'm just gonna be just interested in what you're um currently starting to work with yeah so uh, the zero integrations is there um we've just going through the last few stages of the of the certification and um, yeah. started the work on on the sage integration we'll do quick yeah. Uh, as well like you can just literally like quite easily export and import in like invoices yeah, okay. you can even yeah. you can also email them into libio so actually libio in france is more often used as a standalone solution right okay be- interesting. because they don't have the prevalence of accounting software out there so yeah, one, okay. one of our taglines is like centralized like that's the idea of getting all those invoices into the same place okay. some come in the post some come by email Right, they come in a multitude of different ways. So the goal being get them all into into one solution. So Libya operates like standalone, and you can quite easily get your um, get your invoices in there. But we do believe that the accounting software integrations will be critical in in the UK because the way making tax digital has impacted impacted yeah. that. So that call of the purchase bills that Zero call them or purchase invoices that you'll get from your accounting system approval process, pay process in Libya, and then once paid, it pushes back the payment effectively into the accounting software to say, hey, look, these invoices have all been all been paid down. Right, okay, so it's feeding two-way out and yeah. then information back in to update. <clears throat> yeah, again, it comes back to, you can differentiate yourself like, on experience. Um, and I think that's like, that's important to us of like making a really slick experience so people don't have to do any more manual work and they don't have to worry about that like, actually get the systems like, that talk to each other to, to do the to do the grunt work and, and make everyone's lives that a little bit easier okay 
cool. Um, and how's that been sort of engaging with other solutions for the integrations? Because uh, obviously you're so in common with, with Zero uh, personally, but you were saying there's, there's quite a different um, sort of relationship with, in France with, with some of the general ledgers and things. Yeah, I think I've spent the last like five weeks like just trying to go and like that I've got lots of relationships in that zero world, but actually yeah. not across other other platforms necessarily. So we, yeah. we spent a bunch of time uh, and we've been in some quite good conversations with the people at Sage for a while, even long before I, I turned up. And, and in yeah. France, actually, uh, Libio is embedded in the QuickBooks um, yeah. invoice. Yeah, so actually, you, pay, that, yeah. you, you, you pay through Libio, um, albeit it, it's skinned and it looks like, looks like Intrit. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, look, those relationships are, are important, and we're we're off kind of trying to trying to work with them. Either as like embedded finance, which is quite a big thing at the minute. Yeah. Eco, just ecosystem players. So we exist on the periphery, and people like, use us like with an integration into those accounting software products. And then there's where we can do joint go to market and like, like through verticals. So that there's an opportunity right to pick one of these products and say, hey, look, yeah. you guys have got a product and a solution, and it works in the like tech industry so why don't we do some joint events yeah, yeah. and joint go to market on how our solutions like solve problems yeah like, like rather than like one solution so yeah that's like, we're definitely keen and there's opportunities to i think to like to, to work with like not just the accounting software companies but also the wider ecosystem yeah that, that exists out there like the way apis work it's not all about the gl these days it's actually no. about lots of other ecosystem products and talk so we integrate with dext as well yeah, so okay. actually, like that, that Dext integration. If you're using Dext for like your OCR, then you can push those invoices like directly. So there's good, good conversations and good opportunities around how we yeah. how we work better and make that make that a bit easier for people who don't want to move away from uh, from Dext but do want their invoices once they've been kind of OCR to be fed into to Libya to be paid. Okay. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point around the ecosystem because there are definitely ecosystems within the ecosystem. So I think people are hopeful that whatever your general ledgers, that ecosystem is it. Well, actually, you start going into those products. Um, they've all started to build their own mini ecosystems. It's not going to be thousands. It could be 10. It could be 15. I've seen some at 50. But there's definitely ecosystems within ecosystems now. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile, like you mentioned there, around the Dext. Uh, to Libio uh, solution, Dex are starting to get their own ecosystem. You start to get your own ecosystem yeah. of the product, and uh, it's really interesting how it intertwines. Yeah, I think like one of the really interesting opportunities of kind of coming out of zero and, and joining Libio was I like, felt like we were kind of done a little bit. I know like, everyone's going to use some cloud software in the future. Yeah. But actually, like most people use at Zero or QuickBooks or Sage, like, they use it for compliance, right? They use it to like their account yeah. and keeps them out of jail, right? So your your books are up to date, you file your VAT returns, all your expenses are in there, so everything's like like done properly. But actually, I think most of the value that businesses get actually is delivered via the ecosystem, and I, I've yeah. seen that numerous times. Like if like if if you're a retailer, right? Actually, the best piece of software you've probably got is your point of sale system yeah it's telling system, you absolutely. telling you the, the products that you're selling yeah. right the products you're not selling it's looking at your footfall right it's giving you all of these rich insights it's not just collecting payments right it's giving you all yeah. these rich insights on how you drive your your business actually that's your core piece of software inventory is the same like lots of inventory, inventory products are your entry point and you use them yeah. day in day out and actually your accounting software is a bit of a byproduct yeah um, of, of that and i think that there's an opportunity and that's where the ecosystem can really come to life and i think we spent what 12 years right getting cloud accounting embedded in accounting firms and look there's yeah. still a huge way to go on that right it's still yeah. um, adoption rates probably 30 odd percent yeah. something like that like, it's still a, a long way to go if people are adopting more of that technology but i think that's more of a natural adoption now the opportunity for like all ecosystem players is it's kind of like now's your moment right to like if you don't yeah. execute now and you don't get it right now then then you may well get left behind but there is real value for businesses to be had um by using uh by using the ecosystem yeah i think you're dead right it's really interesting because i think sometimes from a accounting and book, bookkeeping perspective we can get transfixed on the general ledger is a core add-on and we've got these like little finance function Sis, uh, solutions which can fit in and around that but you're dead right as a business you normally are on a till system or a job management system or an inventory system or a booking system that is <laughs> and the actual accounting becomes the as we, the old term add-on the additional app and and that receives the the key information but as you say that the day-to-day -day is run on this 
one system. So it is. You're right. It's getting a little bit transfixed on the general ledger being the only player. Uh, and sometimes uh, we're hearing more and more at the moment where uh, speak to some uh, uh, accountants and bookkeepers a couple of weeks ago where they're having problems because the business owner or the business is picking a system and then worrying about the accounting later on and it's causing issue if it's not a if yeah. not a good integration if it's, there's no integration um and, and then you're having to pick up the pieces so you know, we do have to think about that concept and that perspective from the uh, business uh, team that they've got something else they've got other things that they need addressing as well as getting the account right and that's the balance of it really yeah and I, that's why like the kind of services you guys do right, is important because I think the implementation and the selection of software becomes more important because whilst yeah. it's great that APIs exist and you can connect services from different suppliers together, which makes software companies work really hard. Like they sit yeah. there sweating and worrying that someone's going to eat their lunch because like they can move to someone else relatively. Yeah, completely. Whereas, whereas historically, that, that software companies didn't care. You'd sit there and go, well, what are they going to do if this piece of it is rubbish? Yeah, yeah, they're, not, yeah. like, they're, they're not going to dump everything, are they? No, right? no, and no, that, and now like, the power is really in the buyer's hands. But equally, like when you're connecting multiple systems together from different companies, there is a lot of work that goes on with, with doing that. And you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to end up where you're missing a piece of the puzzle because it doesn't integrate with, uh, with your solution. So actually uh, spending a bit of time and investigating, uh, even engaging someone that, that can help support that, I think is, um, yeah. is important. But like going back to the, like, the general ledger part, I think the, uh, where it gets harder is like one to, like you think of 99% of businesses, right? A one to nine employees. So they've got fairly yeah. basic requirements. They just don't think about that stuff. Like, it doesn't no. register. And equally no. it should, like, even if you're a small business, like being able to have a simple solution and even just a couple of products that fix like key pay points for you, even our, our window cleaner takes payment at the door now, which is yeah. like, perfect for everybody, right? I remember the time I used to send a text, right? And like, I have to go into the online bank and <laughs> uh, I set that up and then he send a text to say, you still haven't paid me. And then he sent me another text. And then, like, I'm not cleaning your windows till you pay me back. Like, I'm really, it wasn't I didn't want to pay you. I haven't got the like 12 quid to do it. It's like, yeah, literally, yeah. I, just, I, just don't, I just haven't got around to doing it. And now it's like, he knocks on the door and you tap the card and off he goes. He yeah. hasn't got any admin. It's that kind of stuff. It's not how small you are. There's like little bits of problem solving that can make people's people's lives that little bit easier. And whilst he's got to then pay a small percentage, right, for for using his Zettle device, um, I, but he gets his evenings back. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, people aren't texting yeah. anymore. It's that simple, got, simple value. Hasn't got to be a WhatsApp warrior in the evening trying to find his uh, his, his five lots of Glen Fosters haven't paid their uh, twelve exactly. quid. So yeah, it, it is. It's uh, there's wins elsewhere. Okay, I mean, been really cool to listen to um, about the product and, and always good to, to re reconnect with you, Glenn. And I'm sure I'll see you at a few events. What events are you guys doing um, over the coming months? Yeah, so we've got Countex next yeah, week. Okay. Um, yeah. I think you're um, at the Advanced Track Conference, actually, just yeah. wandering around next week as uh, people's friends. I think you're down there. So I'll yeah, I'll see you there. Yeah, I'll see a few people there. Um, so then Accountex, then we got the Digital Accountancy Show. We're actually sponsoring the After After Party. Like this our accounting world's going crazy. Barbecue uh, at a pub and some, some drinks. So like, please, if you're at the Digital Accountancy Show, come over, see us, grab a wristband, and come along to the After After Party, which I think is apparently where like, all the cool shit's going to happen. Like, yeah, that's, okay. yeah, that's what we want to hear. Great. And, um, yeah. And, and, and if somebody's listening to this and is keen to sort of get engaged with you and start to be part of that feedback loop and maybe part of your partner, uh, how do they how do they get in touch with you? What's the best way of them engaging with you, Glenn? Yeah, look, the website's like libio.io, so libeo.io, and you'll find contact us options on there, so you can contact us through there. Like you'll find me on on Twitter and and LinkedIn. Equally, yep. it's just glenn at libio.io so if anyone wants to, to have a chat or ask any questions or um or do anything at all there's my email address out in the wild now so they're there more than go. welcome to uh to, to uh, spam me as much as they would like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i'm sure you'll get be on a few spam lists now well glenn that's been brilliant thanks a lot for your time this morning it's been it's been really good to, to hear and uh, and and uh, good to talk to you actually about a different product and a, and a different way <laughs> and a different uh, a different progression of the um of the stage of the progression actually of a, of a firm because i think i probably engaged you originally back in 2014-15 which was uh, a different era for, for zero um so it's been really good to connect so thanks a lot glenn
No worries. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks, Matt. No worries. Um, anyone who's listening, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. I think we're on all the other pod, uh, podcast platforms. If you want to give us a, a cheeky five-star rating, please do. If it's not five-star, don't rate. Um, and for now, I'll leave it at that. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Glenn.